our great boxing champion, Muhammad Ali, who said, if you're at 50 and you look at life the same way as 20, you wasted 30 years. And I don't feel that uh, this wonderful experience at the Institute, I wasted uh, any years. Welcome here this evening to the 2010 Corporate Awards for the Foreign Policy Association. I'm Margaret Brennan. Um, I'm an anchor at Bloomberg Television, but more importantly tonight, I'm a Whitehead Fellow here at the Foreign Policy uh, Association. So, so we're all lucky enough to be here t tonight and enjoy a great dinner and uh, celebrate some really wonderful people. Um, some of you are here because you're friends of the FPA, and we see you quite often at events like these. And then others are, are here to honor Larry Ulick of BBVA Compass and... <laughs> And the Honorable Richard Neiman, the Superintendent of Banks for New York State. And all of you regulated by him are, are, are very heartily clapping uh, this evening. Uh, so uh, between these two honorees, you know, one sits on the board of what is one of the largest seven largest financial institutions in the world. The other runs the oldest bank regulatory agency in the country. So uh, I'm excited about what we're going to learn from the two of them this evening uh, as we get the remarks underway. Um, you know, it, it's interesting with the, the concept of the Foreign Policy Association and, and deciding that being global is important because it seems almost anachronistic to, to classify things as global these days, doesn't it? Because what isn't? I mean, what can you actually separate out these days as being truly a local issue? I mean, one of the, the prime lessons, it seems to me, of the financial crisis has been when it comes to finance, borders don't matter. Uh, globalization means you can't afford to just have your eye uh, on your national boundary. You need to be looking beyond, and you need to be looking uh, at the interconnected matter of this. I mean, every day when I wake up and I'm reading headlines, it, it seems to be emphasized more and more. Um, a worrisome headline that Chinese consumers are likely to pay more for their food at the grocery store causes jitters around the world because we start thinking about inflation and Chinese regulators and what are they going to do to try to, to tamp that down. These days, I mean, all of your 401ks and your retirement plans are definitely impacted by just how old Greek and French pensioners are when they seek their own retirements. I mean, who, who would have thought that we'd be in that kind of situation? But the point is, is you can't afford not to know what's happening outside of your own backyard. And I think that just highlights and underlines and, and reemphasizes the importance of organizations like these. Uh, the, the Foreign Policy Association is just you know, being not only a good global citizen, but frankly, just being smart uh, about your own self and, and the world as it's uh, changing around you. So this organization has been around since uh, 1918. So the world has changed uh, drastically. The organization has, has stuck it around and adapted and really incorporated to a large part here in the financial capital of the world, the financial systems. And I, I really do believe that, that some of the first places you see changes are in the global markets. It, it's where the money flows, and then you see the political change, and you see the social policy, and you see everything else sort of happen around it. So uh, it, it's wonderful tonight to be able to bring all those things together and to celebrate them. And I want to tell you where your funds are going tonight. They're, they're going to support some of the outreach programs and educational programs that the FPA uh, undertakes. So without further ado, I would like, um, first off, to, to explain to you all that on your program you will see Gonzalo de las Heras of uh, Grupo Santander supposed to be with us tonight, but the weather didn't comply. And, and neither did his schedule with that. So he's in Boston, but we are very, very lucky to have the man in charge of everything here tonight, Noel Latif, come uh, up here to the stage and kick off our awards. Noel? Thank you, Margaret. And I wish I was in charge of everything. Uh, I, I would have at least tried to uh, uh, serve up better weather uh, today. Uh, I know that uh, Gonzalo de las Heras very much wanted to uh, present uh, you, Larry, uh, with the uh, Foreign Policy Association Medal. I also know that uh, I share with Gonzalo uh, the same high regard for you uh, and appreciation for your warm sense of humor, uh, your extraordinary intellect, 
and uh, your uncanny ability to ask, as we all know, uh, the incisive question. I am uh, reminded of the British diplomat who was uh, granted an audience by Chairman Mao uh, and uh, decided to ask him a seminal question. Chairman Mao, he asked, how would the world have been different if Khrushchev had been assassinated instead of President Kennedy? Chairman Mao thought about the question for a moment and he responded, we know one thing is for certain, Aristotle and Nassus would not have married Mrs. Khrushchev. <laughs> uh, let me turn to uh, Gonzalo's remarks. It gives me great pleasure to recognize my old friend, Larry Ulick. I had the good fortune of working closely with Larry when I was chairman of the Institute of International Bankers, and I hold him in the highest regard. Over a 23-year stint at the Institute as its chief executive officer, Larry championed the national treatment of financial institutions, promoting globalization of financial services. Larry and the Institute have played a critical role in cross-border expansion of internationally headquartered banks in the U.S. and particularly in New York City. Last year, these banks contributed $60 billion to the U.S. economy, enhancing the depth and liquidity of U.S. capital markets and accounting for fully a quarter of the U.S. banking system. Larry has been a consistent champion of the Foreign Policy Association's work in informing Americans about the world and in enriching the foreign policy debate. It gives me great pleasure to present the Foreign Policy Association Medal to Larry Ulick. Larry? Good evening, everyone. I just have a few informal remarks. Uh, we do have the privilege of hearing from our outstanding superintendent, and we'll make keynote remarks later. So my remarks will be short and informal and in expressing my appreciation. I should say that the only time I got an award before this was for the most demerits in high school. <laughs> and I'm not sure exactly how to accept this award but I'm truly delighted to be accepting this award. I was going to, I have worked with Noel for 20 years and I hold him in the highest regard. He does an outstanding job for this organization. I was also going to add, because I thought Gonzalo was introducing me and he's an old friend as well, that uh, Gonzalo represents the wonderful tradition in banking of working with uh, other colleagues in the industry including your competitors, particularly your competitors, to get something done. And I think we're going to need more of that attitude and more of that, um, that kind of an approach to making progress. I, um, I look out and see so many uh, friends and, and colleagues from the uh, international community. The, uh, the IIB, where I had the pleasure of working for 23 years, I should say, Say it was a pleasure overall. Not every day is a pleasure, but on overall, <laughs> it was a pleasure. And I had the really extraordinary opportunity to work with uh, with bankers from uh, to learn from, work with, get to know bankers from 40 countries. And I uh, I value that experience. I wanted to come up with a funny quote, and I tried to find uh, the right one. But the only thing that came to mind is. Uh, the great, uh, uh, our great boxing champion, Muhammad Ali, who said, if you're at 50 and you look at life the same way as 20, you wasted 30 years. And I don't feel that uh, this wonderful experience at the Institute, I wasted uh, any years. Um, and in that regard, I, I think I, I would be remiss not to introduce my uh, outstanding successor. I don't know if I can see, but Sally Miller, or is she about? Maybe Sally could just stand up and we... The, uh, 
the new chief executive of the Institute and a person of great talent and experience from the American Bankers Association. I wish her and all my uh, colleagues uh, a great success as they now undertake what will be a, a somewhat Herculean task of dealing with Dodd-Frank, but I think they're up to it. The, I won't make technical remarks tonight, but certainly we'll have something to talk about and worry about going forward. Uh, let me formally thank the, uh, the FPA and, and uh, Chairman Archibald Cox and my friend Neil, uh, Noel. Um, again, I really am honored to have this award. Um, I have benefited so much from working with the FPA and being actively involved. I think it helps us all develop an international perspective. And frankly, in these times, we need to have an international perspective and reach out to the world, engage the world if we're going to solve the many problems that transcend our borders and that we share with so many other parts of the world. I, uh, I really think we have developed a wonderful relationship, uh, many members of the IIB and the FPA, and I hope that that relationship will go forward, and I hope that the, collectively the resources will be there to, to enable this very fine organization to do all the fine work it does and to expand its activities. So thank you very much. Enjoy the evening. Thank you very much, and congratulations to you, Larry. So, uh, you know, when I was asked to, to do this event, um, I, I was so excited about all the honorees and all the people involved, but also, uh, Larry, I'd be remiss if personally I didn't say, you know, I, I, you spoke about your career, but personally I know you to be such a great family man, and I, I think one of the great um, uh, proofs of that is uh, your son, Evan Ulick, who's out here, and a dear friend of ours, and, and very important, uh, carrying the mantle in some ways uh, of the next generation of people involved with the FPA, because he is also a Whitehead fellow, which, um, to explain what I was referencing earlier, John Whitehead, as you all know, of Goldman Sachs, was lovely enough to endow uh, a chair for some of the younger generation to be able to come and be involved and to, to participate in so many of the programs that the FPA puts on. And so um, Evan, <laughs> actually, uh, it was one of the very first people I met when I, I got involved with the FPA. So I've known the Ulix uh, for a good time through that. But uh, anyhow, most importantly, we're here before we get to the keynote to your dinners. So I'm not going to stand bet between uh, you all and that. Bon appetit, and we'll get to the keynote after that. <laughs>